Today in the news, we got all the details on the upcoming AMD stuff. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started, shall we? No more rumors, no more waiting, they are here. AMD just unveiled their third generation of Ryzen Threadripper, the release of the 3950X along with some performance metrics, and a new Athlon at a surprising price. Let's start with Threadripper. The 24 core CPU that they teased in this image is called the 3960X. It features 24 cores and 48 threads, a base clock of 3.8 gigahertz with a boost of 4.5, and cache-wise, it has a whopping 100 140 megabytes, which is almost double that of the 2970X that it replaces. Above that is the 3970X with 32 cores and 64 threads. Clockwise, it has 3.7 gigahertz base with a boost of up to 4.5 gigahertz. It also has a little more cache at 144 megabytes thanks to the extra eight cores. Now, both of these CPUs are very impressive, but they do come at a fairly steep price. The 3960X is priced at $1,400 while the 32 core 3970X is at two grand. The new Threadripper CPUs were revealed along with the new TRX40 platform, which has 88 PCIe Gen 4 lanes, although 72 of those are available. Of course, with that comes a new socket for scalability called the STRX4. Performance wise, AMD compared both CPUs to the 9980XE. As you can see here, the 24 core 3960X averages around 30% faster than the 18 core Intel on those tests, and the 3970X is about 50% faster. Impressive numbers, but those are, as usual, a very small sample size. And now for some tough love. In my opinion, those CPUs, or at least the 3960X specifically, is just not the value I expected from AMD. Don't get me wrong, they will probably be the best of the best, but Intel just made a major shift in pricing with the upcoming 10980XE coming at $1,000. AMD basically gave Intel an opening to sell their chips. Had it been twelve dollars or even $1,300 for the 24 core, the value proposition would make Threadripper a no-brainer, but it's just not the case anymore. Now there is a lot more to consider, but this is just my initial reaction. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Moving on, we have the 3950X. It's finally here in all of its 16 core glory, and it will be available on November 25th. Now, I guess since it's a mainstream CPU, AMD still had to do its gaming benchmarks, but this is really a workhorse. Anyways, in 1080p gaming, as you can see from the gray and orange bars, the 3950X goes neck and neck with the 9900K. Now, the blue bar is Intel's 12 core 9920X. Right now, this CPU costs $1,200, compared to the 749 of the 3950X, so it's definitely a better buy. But I have to stop for a moment to say that we should honestly ignore all of the benchmarks that we see here. Not only the gaming focused ones, but also the ones here for productivity. And not because they come from AMD, so they are cherry picked benchmarks, etc, etc, but more because we can't make comparisons with Intel's HEDT lineup right now. Sure, the 9920X is $1,200, but its replacement, the 10920X, is coming out very soon at $700. I'm sure the 3950 X will still come out on top, but those numbers and charts won't matter for long. If AMD were to compare the 3950X to a thousand plus dollar CPU again after Intel releases the 10th gen in a month or two, the charts would look way different since it would have to go after the 10980XE. There is one chart we can trust though, and that is the efficiency one. AMD really has Intel beat in that category. AMD also implemented an eco mode feature for the 3950X, and this allows the CPU to run at 65 watt TDP while keeping 75% of full performance and it keeps the CPU up to 7 degrees cooler. That's a pretty cool feature given the 3950X is optimized for liquid coolers with a 280 rad at least. Lastly, and in my opinion, we have the star of the show, the brand new AMD Athlon 3000G. This CPU seems to be the successor to the uh, 200GE. It gets a fresh new price of $49 compared to $80 for the 200GE. It gets a bump in clocks of 300MHz for the CPU and 100MHz for the Vega 3 graphics. Plus, it's unlocked, so you can overclock it. AMD is comparing it to the Pentium G5400, which is about $20-25 more expensive, and it looks pretty good for 
for 720p gaming in Rocket League, CSGO, and Fortnite. Now, on the side of the box, it mentions that it's based on the Zen Core. This could mean just the overall Zen architecture, but I think that it means it's just an overclocked 200GE on the same old first generation Zen. I say this because the overclock shown is at 3.9 gigahertz, which is what the 200GE overclocks at, even though it's supposed to be a locked CPU. So there it is, that was the AMD info dump for November. Once again, the charts aren't super helpful thanks to Intel delaying their 10th gen HEDT platform, but that's not AMD's fault. Their charts aren't misleading, they just can't really be completed. As for the release date for the third gen Threadripper, I don't have that information just yet, but if I do get it, I'll put it right here on the screen. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Also, when I polled you guys about uh, streaming on Twitch or on YouTube, it was like 55% YouTube and 45% Twitch. Really confusing. I don't know what to do. I think I might have to go with YouTube.